Morning fam, it's Monday morning, and I'm about to head over to the yard. I couldn't help but notice this moon right here. And I can't know, couldn't help but notice how the clouds constantly move, but that circle around the moon never goes away. I think that's just the way of God saying to us, I've always got my eye on you. I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. No matter what tries to come between us, I'm always gonna be there. I'm gonna get on over to the yard fam. I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Well fam, as you can see, I'm looking at my logs. This is the beginning of a week, so I got a full eight hours of, I mean, I saw, I'm sorry, I have to take a break in eight hours. I've got 11 hours of drive time that I can drive today. It's Monday. I can work 14 hours today, which is Monday. And I can work 70 hours for the rest of the week until next Monday, okay? Now, there's a lot of discussion around logs and whether electronic logs are better than paper logs. Here's an example of a paper log. Um, where you have to manually go in, fill out this information, which is basically who you are, what your truck number is, what your load number is and all that, which the electronic logs do for you. Uh, these are some older ones right here. I fold them back, but you can see I was off that day. Um, let's find a day where I did some work. Here we go. So you can see right along here, when I was, whether I was on duty, off duty, in the sleeper berth, driving if you look right down here you can probably see off duty sleeper driving on duty you can see the places that i stopped where i was all that good stuff right there so i'm going to talk about the log system today um just my opinion on it everybody's got an opinion and all those opinions are valid but i'm going to give you my 10 cents on the logs whether i prefer the paper or whether i review the electronic logs. But before I do that fam, I gotta get my pre-trip done, so I need to go ahead and log in. Now in order to log in, I'm simply gonna go up here where it says off duty, I'm gonna go on duty, and then um, where it says add remark, um, I'm gonna do a pre-trip inspection. Where is it? Pre-trip and save it. And that's it. So you notice this dropped down to 1359 immediately, and this dropped down to 69 hours and 59 minutes because it's, it's starting. So I got to show that I'm working. All right, fam. Well, I just finished my walkthrough, uh, checking out the truck. So I'm getting ready to head on down to uh, blah, 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 Fort Pierce. So all I got to do now is uh, just double check. I don't know why I always get a stick on the back of my trailer right there. But anyway, sorry about the lights fam. Yeah, I'm getting ready to head on down to uh, uh, Fort Pierce and come right back. I got to stop a TA along the way and uh, get some fuel. I only put about 60 gallons in, so I'll get a free shower out of that. But that'll get me down there and back. I'll have more than enough fuel to do what I need to do. So, hey, it's Monday fam. It's the first day of the week. How does that old saying go? It's the first day of the rest of your life. So you and I get to determine how we do this thing. So uh, just just stay focused. You know what? Don't let the little things get you down, fam, because you know you got up every day. Somebody found out they had cancer yesterday. So whatever you're dealing with, fam, is it, I'm not saying it's, it's not bad, but it's probably not bad as what they just heard. Or they heard that their mom was real sick or something like that. So be grateful for what you have get through this week fam with an attitude of gratitude so all right i'm about to put blackie back in the hole and get on down this road fam here we go all right fam my ride down to fort pierce about 225 miles it takes a little over three hours to get down there of course it's probably gonna take me closer to Fort because i got to stop and get fuel and uh at the uh, t8 right there south of jacksonville as you can see fam from jacksonville it is a straight shot down 95 along the atlantic ocean uh, easy peasy drive this morning. Now it's taken me about 30 minutes to get everything done that I needed to get done today, checking the truck, fluids, all the stuff that I do. And if you look right up here in this top corner, it says I'm on duty. And what's gonna happen is as soon as I go over five miles an hour, 
it's gonna put me into the drive mode, which will start ticking down this 11 hours as soon as I go over five miles an hour. Or I could just change it manually, but I'm lazy and I just let the computer do it for me. different perspectives and a lot of different opinions um, my personal opinion is I'm for electronic logs you know you're allowed to drive 11 hours in a day and my question to anybody is from from my standpoint anyway why would you want to work more uh, the answer is simple for those that would say yeah uh, they have to they got they got kids to feed they got a mortgage to pay so they need to work as many hours as possible, but your alertness and all that, it goes down. And there's some old war dogs out there been driving trucks 20, 30 years. I wouldn't go up against them no matter how much you paid me. But I don't care who you are, your, your productivity, your alertness, all that goes down after a certain time. Another reason that I like the electronic logs is because I don't have to do that much. You know, when I got this truck, I was on paper logs, and that's why they're they're still right up here above my head. You know, you're by law, I'm required to have paper logs in my truck, and I have to have a minimum of eight days worth of paper logs. The way the system works is you can drive, I think I said it already, you can work 14 hours a day. Fam, I don't want to work 14 hours a day. I want to have what's called work-life balance. Again, this is me talking. Some other, some other men and women out there want to work 10 hours a day. I'd rather work eight, go fishing for two or whatever. So um, I also believe that there's people out there that don't make the best decisions. And some people will push themselves beyond their capability. I know I've done it in my life in other areas. Um, you got to manage it. Now, if you have a truck, of, a fleet of trucks, and you need to manage behaviors across an entire enterprise, you have to have an electronic log system. Um, I'm all for cameras in the truck. A lot of people don't want cameras in the truck. Um, I'm looking at some different camera systems right now that will allow me to put five cameras on this truck. Now, part of my reason is, is you guys have been doing this vlog all the time, but I also don't want to ever be in a situation where somebody does something wrong and I get blamed for it because I can't prove that they did something wrong. So if I got the cameras in the right place, it's fine. If you want to sit here and look at me, sit behind this wheel and look out this window, boy, you in worse shape than me. I don't care if they film me. I'm just sitting here driving the dang truck. So electronic logs, in my opinion, are a good thing. Paper logs, I mean, they're fine, but you know, I think when you're looking at that enterprise level, you, you got to take away opportunities for for, you know, bad behaviors to rise to the surface. So I'm going to get on down this road, fam, and uh, I got 214 miles left. I'll be stopping at the TA to put some fuel in the truck. Y'all have a great morning. Here we go. Well, hey, fam, I made it down here to Port St. Lucie, about 230 miles down the road. So uh, about three, three and a half miles away from the customer. Hopefully I'll get in and out of there pretty quick. It's kind of overcast, which is a good thing because it's heating up here in Florida, fam. It's uh, about 75 degrees. So I'm gonna run down here and get this load off my back. I'll be picking up in Blackshear tomorrow and taking that load down to, uh, to Winter Haven. So I will check in with you guys here in a little bit. All 
right, fam. Well, I'm unloaded here in uh, uh, Fort Pierce. I couldn't film anything, fam, because I broke my tripod. Both of them. I'm just a destructive fella. But um, I'm headed back up to Jacksonville now. Uh, and then I've got to go up to Blackshear, pick up a load, take it down to Winter Haven, Florida. So I got to deal with the Orlando soup during spring break. And then after that, fam, I got three loads. Tia was so nice to set me up on three loads from Live Oak to Jacksonville. So I'm going to try to get two of them in a day. And uh, then one on, that would be Wednesday morning. No, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, whichever. But I'm, I'm right there by Georgia, so this works out great. I really appreciate her doing that. So anyway, um, I'm going to mosey on up to Jacksonville. If I never get out of this intersection, and I will catch up to you guys later. Here we go, fam. Well, good morning, fam. It's Tuesday morning. Over here at the yard, just doing my final check on the truck. Getting ready to head up to Blackshear, pick up a load, and then I'm taking that down to... Uh, Winter Haven, after I get to Winter Haven, uh, I gotta bounce back up to Live Oak. Uh, that's actually where I train, but I gotta go to Live Oak and pick up something. But I got three loads of it that I gotta bring back to Jacksonville. So I'll be just shuttling back and forth from Live Oak to Jacksonville. I hope each and every one of you had a good night's sleep. I did pretty good last night. And uh, getting ready to just get on this road. Blackshear is only 79, 80 miles up the road. So I want to get there between 7 and 7.30, uh, get the load, I'll head on down probably 75 on the turnpike. Uh, still trying to avoid Orlando for one more week, so I won't be coming down 95, then I'll bounce back up 75, deal with that. So uh, that's it. So I'll check in with you guys as I get on down the road. I got to check the other side of the truck, make sure tires and all that stuff is good. And then I'll mosey on down or up, I guess, to Blatcher because it's kind of north. Talk to y'all in a little bit. Here we go. Well, fam, you can see up the Blackshear is about 80 miles. Uh, it'll take me a little over an hour to get there. Should get there about 7.15 or so. Uh, from Blackshear then down to Winter Haven, it'll be a total of 350. So about 260 miles, 70, whatever that is, to get on down there. So fam, this is just part of route planning. You see, the Garmin originally wants me to go straight down 95, which you can see right here. And um, I'm gonna go through Gainesville. I'm gonna go down 75 and cut across on the turnpike because I know what's going on in Daytona and, um, not Daytona, but more of Orlando at spring break. So it's actually 4.7 miles closer to go this route, and but it's about 16 minutes longer. My clock is in good shape. Only worked a little over 10 hours yesterday, so that was actually a good day. Sickness, but as the morning sun broke over the roof, it caught Claude in a moment of truth. Well, fam, made it up to Blackshear. Like I say, it's only about an 80 mile ride, but this intersection right here is one that'll run your blood pressure up a little bit because it's one of those where the railroad tracks run parallel with the street I'm on. Uh, Highway 84 in Georgia. So when you turn coming out, you literally have to run the red light. Uh, not the red light, the uh, stop sign. So just one of those that we deal with. I'll show you here in just a second. Turn right on Yeoman Road. So Mr. Bree that you need to ponder. Gotta live what you believe and do what you wanna. Gotta give to receive like a street performer. Yeah. It was one of them days around the corner. The sun blazed like a sauna. He saw the sun rays shine on her like limelight. He started killing it like cyanide. She's feeling it. The vibes right. Tight connection like they psychic. So why fight it? The moment's golden. Souls and minds united. Then it's broken and she's walking past. But his eyes open. Scoping the phone number she dropped in a hat. Now how about that? It's all in the game. Switch from cannonball to train. It was calling his name. Small change jingled. Then a man dropped singles. He kept blowing. Hoping the cash is stacked like a can of Pringles. All right, fam. Well, I got that load done i just got to go on the other side tighten down my x strap then i can get on down the road to winter haven it's tight but i think i can make it on time fam so i'm gonna push it and try to get there here we go fam 
All right, fam, loaded up. We got my paperwork. And I'm about to head down to uh, Winter Haven. Uh, this is that intersection. That, man, I get nervous every time I come through here because of uh, the fact that you got to stop. When well, you can't stop on railroad tracks, that's just never safe because the trains that come through here, they're moving. So I can't. trying to keep from messing my tires up back there. Man, it's a real jagged edge. I gotta jag the tires across it. Turn right on Gilman Road. Ah! But anyway, so I'm gonna get down here and try to negotiate this, uh, these railroad tracks and uh, should be all right. And then I'm gonna head on down to Winter Haven. It says I'll get there at two o'clock, so that means about 2.30, so ain't no messing around on this trip, fam. I got a boogie. Catch you in a little bit. Here we go. Well, hey fam, I had to stop and get fuel. I put 120 gallons in, uh, which will get me through the next couple of days. I want to get down to Winter Haven and then back up. And I should be, hold on, I got a phone call. Hello? Yes, this is the ICBCC, the Ice Cream Bar Consumption Committee. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I just got one. I have it right here. I was in there and I purchased my ice cream bar to make sure that uh, my inside was cool so that I wouldn't get upset. I have to stay cool so that I don't get upset with the traffic. Yeah, I appreciate y'all checking on me. Okay, thank you so much, goodbye. Friends, that, that was the Ice Cream Bar Consumption Committee, and they check on us truck drivers to make sure that we stay cool. It's been scientifically proven that if you, you know you get you get all worked up and hot in this traffic, but if you want to remain cool, you gotta eat an ice cream bar. Here we go, fam. Alright, fam. Well, I'm down here in Winter Haven, just uh, waiting to get the last two lifts off the truck. Uh, they did not want me filming anything, so I'm trying to be slick. Catch this right now. Nice bunch of guys. They're, they're moving fast and everything, but uh, this is what it is. Titus was ahead of me, and these guys were on a roll. Well, good morning, fam. It is Wednesday morning, and I am in... Oh my goodness, fam. Let me get the critter cam out. Now, fam, me being the fearless type of guy I am, I usually just go over there and grab critters like that by the throat. But this time, I'm going to let him live. And I'm going to walk backwards back to the truck. Because that thing was huge. He's got to be at least seven inches tall. And... I just don't feel like wrestling with a beast today, so I'm gonna turn around and check the truck out on this side because something could be broken on this side. So, but anyway, uh, I'll be heading up to Live Oak, which is about 90 miles up the road, and then my delivery was in Jacksonville, which is 94 miles in the other direction. So, uh, and I've got three loads of lumber to pick up at this place and take over to a job site in Jacksonville. So kind of an easy peasy day for me not the greatest paying day but hey it's like i'm not scared y'all you know peeking around the back of the trailer at that huge beast he was at least seven inches tall i'm not i'm not a scary type i'm i'm, I'm a rust I'm, I'm rough and tough you know he, he ran from me anyway because he was scared so anyway uh i'm about to get this show on the road you know uh Little Indiana Jones in me came out. I can't help it. And then uh, I'm going to head on over to Live Oak and uh, spare these vicious beasts. Here we go, fam. All right, fam, well, I'm out here at this place called Benderholtz. I'm about uh, 90 miles 
west of Jacksonville. I've got three loads to pick up at this place. So we'll see how fast it goes. Um, I wish I had gotten here earlier, but I actually slept in a little bit this morning. I didn't get up till 6.30. I normally get up and roll at five. So, but I feel awesome. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. So um, anyway, I'm gonna wait here and hopefully get loaded here pretty quick and then head on down to Jacksonville, turn around and come right back. Here we go, fam. Well, fam, I got this load. It's 12 packs. Uh, my weight is good. I'm at 75,000 and, and change. So I got two more of these to get. So, uh, but I got to finish strapping the load down. And I didn't strap down on purpose because I wasn't sure of my weight. So. Now that I know my weight is good, uh, I'm going to tuck right back here and uh, finish strapping the load down and then get on down the road. Well fam, I'm in Jacksonville and this is a very, very congested uh, job site. I don't know where they want me, but the guy's getting in his lift, and I guess I'm gonna follow him on around. So we'll see what's getting ready to happen. Tasting Association uh, Consortium and uh, there's a Busy Bee truck stop down here on the left and there's been a report from the, uh, the Chocoholic uh, Prevention Association that says that the chocolate content in the milkshakes is not up to the highest the level it's supposed to be at and you know you can get you know choco deprivation syndrome if you don't have the right amount of chocolate and there's a number of Americans that have been suffering from the Choco Deprivation Syndrome. So now they want me to go in and do a secret inspection. I just wanted to go back to Jacksonville, Bill fam, but I gotta stop here at the Busy Bee and check this out. It's my civic duty, y'all. It's my civic duty. Well, good morning, fam. How's everybody doing? It's Thursday morning and uh, I'm over here at Jacksonville on the north side, uh, trying to get this load off my back. I spent the night right here on the yard so I could be the first one in line, and there's already a few trucks showing up. So um, 
I already did my walk around on the truck. Sorry for all the background noise, but that's just how it is over here this morning. People are coming from left and right. You see this guy over here behind me. Uh, he's unloading me, and then there's a bunch of trust trucks uh, that are showing up also. So I hope each and every one of you had a good night's rest. Uh, I did. A little bit cool this morning, probably in the high 50s. Uh, nice little breeze, overcast. Uh, so uh, I'll keep in touch with you guys as I get headed down the road, and uh, we will talk soon, Sam. Here we go. Hey, fam, I'm at the station. It just still amazes me how much money it takes to run these trucks sometimes. So um, I like to put fuel in in increments of 60 because I get a free shower every 60 gallons, which just proves that no truck driver should be nasty. But anyway, I'm going to stop right here because this should get me close through Monday when I cycle in. So the truck's almost full because um, I had uh, over a quarter tank in there. So anyway, fam, I wanted to show that to you. Here we go. Hey fam, I'm over here back again in Jacksonville at the uh, job site. It's my third load, so I'm done. But I'm getting ready to heat up some uh, that beef that I made this weekend from the uh, the Instapot. Some scalloped potatoes and some collard greens. Somebody's got to eat it, y'all. So I'm getting ready to eat this up, heat the, eat this up, and heat it up. But I'm gonna heat it up before I eat it up, and. Uh, enjoy the fruits of my labor. Here we go. All right, fam, well, I'm up in uh, Savannah, basically. And for the longest time, my steps going into the truck have been broken. Here's one piece of the step, and here's the other. So I'm gonna try to put them back together and then put it back on this mount down here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is supposed to go on, you know, like this, but it's clearly broken. So I'm gonna try to mend it up with these just to get me by so I don't keep uh, breaking my leg every time I put weight right here and it just springs right on through. Fam, I'm gonna have to put these put these washers on. It's definitely gonna look like Frankenstein's repair shop, but that's just what I'm gonna have to do out here on the road. Fam, it kind of looks like Frankenstein had a party here, but this will get me by for a little bit. I mean, it's it's actually pretty sturdy, so um, I got one more idea of something I want to put under just to give it that much more rigidity. But uh, we're in good shape. I need a flat plate, set it in right here, and I'll be all right. But for right now, it's time to go find a hot shower, fam, because ooh -wee! Stuff gonna be growing over here in a little while, fam. I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna walk across the street uh, and, and find, see if I can find something to eat. Here we go, fam. 
You know, fam, one of the tricks to jerry-rigging something is how you present it after you fix it. So there's the truck, and there's the bottom step. Doesn't it look wonderful? Just don't get too close to it, and it'll look great, fam. It's all in the perception. It's all in the perception. Ooh, we can't even tell it was broken, could you? Can't even tell it's broke, fam. I'm telling you, look at it. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, fam, well, I'm back in the truck, and, uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk over to the uh, uh, to the to the cars where the cars get their fuel, and I'm gonna get. Hold on, my phone is vibrating. Hello. Yes, this is Papa G. Oh, y yes, I'm still a member of the National Wing Tasting Association Correspondents uh, of America. Yes. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in Savannah. Yeah. Oh, across the street. Oh, that wing place is right across the street. You need. Oh, you had a complaint on the quality of the wings at the wing place across the street? I'm going to go in there in stealth mode just for y'all, seeing how I'm a member of the National Wing Tasting Association of America Incorporated uh, Affiliated. Yeah, I I'm going over there right now, and I will eat some of those wings just to make sure they're okay. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Okay, uh-huh, bye-bye. Fam, I really don't want to walk over there. It's my civic duty. I got to do it, fam. I, I got to do it. Fam, I've kind of been in fix-it mode. You can see up there at the top on the left, the microwave, and on the right, you see my air conditioner. Of course, that's the refrigerator. But the air conditioner wasn't working well because it wasn't vented. Uh, I wasn't sucking that hot air. You know, that's a window unit. It's supposed to just hang out your window at your house. So uh, I had to do a little fixing today. And then at the bottom of the vent, I put this fan right here. I had this van, fan inside the truck for the longest, just in the way. And I thought, you know what, before I throw this thing away, let me go ahead and you can see how I kind of screwed it in right there. And I can control this from inside the truck. This right here is the drain that goes up to my uh, air conditioner inside. But since I added this, that air conditioner is performing so much better, fam. I run the air conditioner off of this generator right here, which runs on gasoline. And of course I have some gasoline in there, but I keep this gas can with me so now I've got to walk over to the gas pumps and fill this up because I put all of it in here yesterday so I'm out of I'm out of gas fam that gas can weighs when it's full I don't know about 40 pounds I guess 35 40 pounds and uh Papa G's kind of lazy so the best thing in the world is a harbor freight the only thing better than harbor freight is two harbor freights <coughs> so I bought a little dolly I put that gas can on a dolly and I walk back and forth. I'm going to show you right now, fam. Fam, since I'm in fix-it mode, I might as well show you everything that I fixed today, or at least rigged up. Now, I've been talking about this leak that I have on my air res, my uh, coolant reservoir. Check this out. All that, that orange mess, fam. All of it is coming out of this hole where that black goop is right there. Now, I'm going to replace that whole reservoir tomorrow, but I just wanted to see uh, if that's where it's coming out and I had this stuff because I had to fix another leak. Let me show you that. Okay, fam, this is the uh, air box for the turbocharger. And when my screen, you see this screen down here? When that screen busted loose, it was banging up against this right here. I mean, this right here. And it put a hole in there. So I plugged the hole with this stuff before I replaced this whole thing, which is $1,700. I got plenty of airflow in there, so I thought, let me try this one spot right here. I had some of that goop left over, so that's where the hole is in the air reservoir. I mean, the uh, coolant reservoir, and it goes up when I'm driving. It sprays straight up, and you can see all that orange on there. See all that orange, fam? See all over there? So I don't know if there's more than one hole. That's why I'm just going to replace this thing. It's about 200 bucks. And looking at it, it's not that difficult to get out. But I'm spending a lot of money on coolant. Look how dirty it is, fam. See all that white, crusty, orangey, crusty stuff? That's because this thing is leaking the way it is. I figure since I was here so early, I, I, I wish I could have picked up this evening, but I couldn't. So uh, you, you saw I got that call from the National Wing Tasting Association. So I got to go eat wings. I figured before I ate, I might as well fix some stuff right here. Oh, one more thing I fixed, fam. Let me show you morning I like to come out here and brush my teeth but I got tired of bringing a water bottle out so I put this faucet on right here can you see see this little faucet right here so 
I have running water right there on the outside of the truck and I can brush my teeth uh, right outside. And I got that going again. It wasn't really broken. It had just come the wire. I had to take the wires loose when I did. I don't even remember what I did, but uh, so I'm going to climb back up into my truck with the greatest of ease because I have that new step now. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I digress. Uh, I'm going to climb back up in there and get my dolly so I can go. Oh, here it is right here, fam. See the dolly? It folds out. I'm going to put my little gas can on there, walk over there, get some fuel, come right back, fill up my generator in case I need it tonight. I doubt it because it's only like 70 degrees right now. But uh, just in case, I'm going to be ready, fam. morning fam it's friday morning i just left the uh ta truck stop uh south of savannah and i'm headed up to bloomingdale georgia which is about 22 miles away to pick up a load of low grade lumber that i'm going to take to miami on uh monday uh like i say it's about seven o'clock i should be done today around noon and that is that. But I hope each and every one of you had a good night's rest. I didn't sleep too good last night. Don't even know why, but I'm going to survive it anyway. And I'm looking forward to a good hot shower. So what I'm going to do today is go grab this load. Good chance it'll be alive because they stop at 11. And all the drivers, just like me, are going to want to get in and out. So I'll probably wait in line a little bit today. If I don't, I don't. That's fine, too. But uh, Miami and back from Jacksonville. Six, seven hundred miles plus the trip down so I need about 800 miles of fuel so I'm gonna get the fuel while I'm up here in Georgia and uh, cause I gotta get it you know I'll leave Sunday night probably get that stuff down there and then come back so anyway fam I'll keep y'all posted on the day I'm gonna keep this bucket moving talk to y'all in a little bit here we go Alright family, I'm up here in Bloomingdale and uh, I just got this load done. It's uh, what's called number four lumber so I don't have to tarp it. It's going down to Miami. The only concern that I have is that right now the load weighs 79.3 and I hope it doesn't rain between now and Monday because it'll get heavier. So I am going to stop. Oh, that sun is bright. It's beautiful though. I am going to stop and get some, uh, some fuel while I'm here in Georgia. I got to split my axles in the back too because uh, I'm 37,000 pounds in the back, so I gotta spread those out and then get on down the road, fam. Catch up with y'all in a little bit. All right, fam, well, I got the axle split. So now it's time to jump in this truck and head on down to Jacksonville. Here we go, fam. Well, what's going on, fam? Just made it back to the yard. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, it is 1.30 and I can go home. So uh, I'll be back over here Sunday afternoon. I got to go on down to Miami. I'll be at the uh, exit uh, 106 at the uh, Madison County grounds is where I'll be staying. So, But I hope each and every one of you guys had a good week this week. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me all week long. Uh, uh, if you like the stuff that you're seeing, you know what? Do me a favor. First off, like it. That helps out those algorithms. And then after that, fam, make sure that you uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see. Um, I'm, I'm starting to have more and more fun with this cooking stuff. So that always uh, makes things good when you got good food to eat, even though I cheated more than I should have this week. But that stuff calls me, fam. I have those committees that I'm committed to since I joined them. You know, um, I'd also ask you guys to subscribe to the channel. You know, it really helps me out. Uh, I want to see the family grow. We're going to keep thinking positive thoughts. We're going to keep challenging ourselves with whatever we have to do in a positive manner. And I appreciate each one of you all coming along this journey with me. Take care, fam. I will see you next week.